we, we now all know what the results were of the consultation that you guys had with market participants. I guess my question, or my first question is, are we definitely going to see these changes take place after the August review? Good morning, David. Yeah, thank you for asking the question. Yeah. Uh, in our an announcement, we already said that um, the changes will be effective uh, in our August review. Uh, but I'm afraid that I think we cannot pre-announce I mean, whatever changes that might or might not happen in the August review. I leave it to the market, I think, to, to, to make their own uh, best uh, guess or best estimation. Um, uh, what we are uh, trying to do is that I think the market is very uh, interested in whether these classes of uh, companies would be eligible or not because they, are, they, they don't have the same uh, voting rights because uh, some of them are just uh, secondary listing in Hong Kong. So previously, uh, we are more prudent, but now I think we, we, we made it very clear that this group of companies, this category of companies will be eligible and they will be uh, consider whether uh, they would be joining the indexes or not in our next review in August. Right, and the, there's a cap initially of 5% for these new entrants, if you will. I'm curious, why 5%? Yeah, um, you know, I think in Hong Kong, uh, uh, the market is very skewed. Um, the top three uh, companies in Hong Kong, uh, which are Tencent, AIA, and HSBC Holdings, at the moment, each of them, I think, accounts for something like 10% of the index. Uh, in, in fact, I think, uh, uh, as an index compiler, I think we need to uh, have a balance. So we uh, have this kind of uh, individual constituent weightings, I mean, control. Uh, in considering of these new categories of companies, the, we call it weighted voting rights companies and secondary listed companies. Given, I think we are, we are doing it, I think the first time we believe is uh, desirable or, or or prudent, I think to start with a uh, five percent uh, individual company cap at this stage. And if we look at it, I think see how it goes and how many of these companies uh, will come and will join, and then we can uh, uh, look at the situation and then to see whether it might be changed or not. Uh, do you think that's possible, a, a change or a lifting of, of that cap by the end of this year? Well, I think if, you, if you're talking about the end of this year, I think then that probably would be a, a, a very short period of time, I think, since we started uh, mm. um, acting them. So I, I, I would say uh, we will take a look at what happens, uh, particularly in, I think, the pace of these companies joining uh, the index. Okay. Now, my, my, my other question is, is, is there a minimum amount of time that, you know, these 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 specific stocks, if you will, need to be listed in Hong Kong before they actually become then eligible to be included in the index. And the simple reason I ask you that question is next month we have the likes potentially of JD.com, what have you, listing on the market here in Hong Kong. Uh, would, would those stocks also be eligible for the August review? Um. In managing our Hang Seng Index, I think which is the most important benchmark of the uh, of the Hong Kong market, we understand that I think uh, uh, a lot of listed companies would like to uh, join the Hang Seng Index. It's kind of a status, uh, but in managing it, I think we have kind of a listing history requirement. I think so that I think uh, as an index administrator, we can look at I think their trading, their size, their representative. Uh, things like that. So uh, normally, I think uh, uh, it would take some time um, uh, for the for the existing ones. I think because they have been in Hong Kong for some time, and then I think they are sizable. Mm. I think um, the existing ones they are uh, uh, eligible. I think for our consideration. But for new uh, uh, for, for for some potential uh, upcoming IPO, they probably will need to wait a little a little bit of time. Right. Uh, I think you make a point, right? They just got here. So <laughs> well, wait a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. Now, market representation is, is one of the main considerations, obviously, as coming from that, those consultations as well. Now, one very simple look, Vincent, at simple sector weightings on the index 
And two things stand mm -hmm. out. You have financials and I think you have communication. Those two sectors make, make up an outsized portion of the index here. Do you see mm -hmm. those naturally coming down because of these potential changes? Yeah, I think if, if we look at the composition of the market, um, basically I think uh, our index has been uh, kind of, okay, uh, criticisms that we don't have uh, sufficient uh, so-called new economy stock or tech stock. Uh, I think, but the issue is that I think uh, how many of these companies are coming in Hong Kong and listed in Hong Kong? So um, basically, I think uh, uh, Oh, the, the, the Indians are confined by what's available in the market. So with this change and then with more uh, tech companies, new economy companies coming to Hong Kong, and in the events that I think they are joining the index, and since they are sizable, I would say that I think naturally I think it will improve I think the, the kind of uh, sector balance in our, uh, in our index. We can expect, I think, if... In, in case there are more and more these kind of weighted voting rights or new economy tax stocks joining um, uh, our indexes, they probably would account for a reasonable uh, share of the index. And in this way, I think the traditional sectors uh, like the finance, I mean, probably I think it, it, it will come down.